Bio here from Toba Five Photography. Thank you very much for taking your time to listen to this uh, tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be talking about basic understanding of your camera. I really noticed that a lot of people have uh, a lot of DSLRs and a lot of cameras, but they just don't know how to use it. All they do is shoot and they call themselves uh, professional photographers. It takes a lot more than just point and shoot to turn yourself into a, prof into a professional photographer. So what I'm going to do here is um, it's going to be a series of videos. This is just going to be the tutorial, the theory section of it. We're going to do the tutorial section in another bit. But for this one, it's just going to be the theory. I'm going to approach it like, um, like a lecture. So you could get to understand how your camera works. So we're going to jump straight into it. Enough talking. Uh, let's see how it goes. So we start with basic understanding of the camera. Uh, first things first, I'm going to explain how the camera itself is set up. If you have a look at this diagram here, we have um, this is more or less like uh, your DSLR. If you dissect it, this is exactly what you see of the very plain type of DSLRs. Uh, we've got a sensor here, and that's exactly that is the portion that your image is stored upon. Uh, we've got the prism, which is all over here. Uh, we've got the mirror and we've got your lens. If we have a look at this, this is exactly how it works. Let me just change my mouse over there. Good. If we have an image over here, right, uh, the way you see it, because this is where your eye is, you go through the prism, which bounces the image and then reflects on the mirror. And that is before you can actually see your image. So in actual sense, what really happens is you go, the, your object is right here on, on the side over here, and then it is reflected on the mirror, which goes round through the prism and then comes straight into your eye before you see exactly what you're shooting. So that's just the basics. What normally happens is before a picture is taken, uh, once you press the shutter, you have your mirror, which is this over here, it raises up and then what you see from the mirror is exactly what is going to be reflected at the back of the sensor. So I'm just going to explain how that is, uh, and you know, with with better illustrations. But for first, uh, before we can get what we call a decent or a proper exposure, we need to be able to understand what makes up those exposures. So if you see an image, a very good, beautiful image. Uh, everything is is well is is well lit is absolutely the colors are vibrant everything is fine every time you see those kind of pictures you should know that it it is properly exposed that is the term for it properly exposed and uh, the things that are responsible for uh, for an image to be properly explored if properly exposed is um, what we call the shutter speed, the ISO, and the aperture. Now, having all these three, having a balance between these three gives you a properly exposed image. We're going to see that later in, 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 our, in our tutorials, in the other practical tutorials. But for now, we're only going to be talking theory. All right, so we're going to start with each one of them first. So I'm just going to jump straight. All right, uh, if you pick up this diagram over here, uh, I know it feels more like a biology class, but trust me, it's once you can understand the way this works, then you'll be able to understand your camera. All right. So this is the diagram of the eye. Uh, we've got the cornea, the iris, the pupil, the lens. I'm just going to circle the ones that we really need to talk about. All right. So basically, we've got the iris, right? We've got the pupil, uh, we've got the retina, and we've got the cord and rod cells. I will explain what all of this means. Uh, just bear with me two seconds. Let's see. All right. Basically, the aperture is the lens diaphragm. And that is the opening inside the lens of a camera. Uh, a lens itself has what we call a diaphragm. A diaphragm is more or less like like, like a diameter of of of, um, of the lens that closes and also opens up. Okay, uh, it closes and opens up. So for you to get bigger apertures that means uh you're opening your diaphragm of the lens to a really big to, to the maximum for you to get very small apertures you're closing the diaphragm of the lenses and then you get smaller apertures for that okay um if you have a look at this aperture now uh, this series of apertures on the back of your camera you i'm sure you've seen all these sorts of numbers uh 1.4 2 2.8 f4 all of these numbers are not just randomly selected. 
uh, there's a whole mathematical theory in getting all of this and if there's time i will be able to talk about all of this but for now we're just going to understand exactly what we get to see at the back of the camera using um, the f2 f2.8 f4 f1.4 all of this will show you exactly what it does and now uh, if you have a look at this the bigger number the bigger number is actually a small aperture and the smaller number is actually a large aperture okay you do not get this twisted at all um, big apertures or big numbers refer to small apertures small numbers refer to big apertures and like we said if we talk about a small number which is a large aperture it means that your diaphragm is opened all the way to the maximum and that means that for your image a lot of light is going to be entering remember we talked about the the um, aperture the iso and the shutter speed it is if you have a balance on this three that you will be able to get a properly exposed image so if we assume that the iso and the shutter speed is okay we need to balance the aperture to ensure that the the light that enter is is on point if we have a, a big a too much light the light if you have too much light uh, or maybe you have two very large aperture is there, there's a possibility that your image could be overexposed okay and if you have very small there's a possibility it could be underexposed so depending on the settings of your other two which is the ISO and the shutter speed you could get to have a big you could get to have good amount of light just the right amount of light too much light or small light all right so we also know that the aperture controls the depth of field the depth of field is that uh, beautiful dreamy looking feeling you get every time you have a look at the picture that uh, a subject that is the person or the object that you're shooting stands out from the background so you have all this blur nice beautiful background that just blurs out uh, completely blurs out making your subject stands out it's a word called bokeh i think is i think is japanese or chinese term uh, bokeh uh, we get to talk more about that very soon all right so we move straight into uh, what we call the shutter speed uh, shutter speed mostly is all about the the time or the uh, the exposure time that your camera is open to your subject so basically what that really means is that uh, if we have the aperture set since we've talked about the aperture if you have a, your aperture set to the value that you want you need to be able to correspond your shutter speed to that aperture so if your aperture is opened wide at uh, 1.4 like what we saw in the other one in, in the previous slide if it's opened up at 1.4 your shutter speed depending on the environment of course your shutter speed should be able to uh, to compensate to ensure that not too much light is entering the lens or you know or if the aperture is really 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 small that is 5.6 or, or more uh, your shutter speed itself must be able to compensate by uh, we're going to talk really much about that when we do the other tutorials on that all right but what we're going to do is i'm going to use the diagram of the eye to be able to explain how the shutter speed works uh, the shutter speed works exactly like your iris the way your iris works you know if you close your eyes and you're probably sleeping in a dark room and then you wake up and uh, somebody just opens the window very early in the morning it is your iris itself that actually blocks too much of light from entering into your eyes that is why you get to squint your eyes and you, you know you close it uh, it is the iris that does that it's it acts more like the shutter speed because in that case there's a whole lot of light entering into your eye at that time so what your iris does is it just shuts a lot of light reducing the amount of light entering into your eye so that you don't you don't wake up with a headache all right uh, we could also use the scent of the camera the the picture of the camera here to be able to explain how that works uh, every time the show every time you shoot or you take let's just say you take a picture your mirror flips up and then the image or the person you're shooting is reflected at the back of the center okay so that is exactly what the shutter speed does it is it's the speed at which the mirror flips up and down allowing the sensor 
to be exposed to your image. All right. All right. So the last thing we're going to talk about is what we call the ISO. Some people call it the ASA. The ASA is an old name for it. Uh, for people in film, you will understand it more as ASA instead of ISO. Basically, it's more or less the sensitivity or the light sensitivity. Forgive me there, there's a spelling mistake there. Um, there's the light sensitivity of your film or your center. Uh, so, depending, if you have a high ISO, then your 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 image is going to be sent more sensitive to light therefore adding a lot of noise to the image let me show you an example of uh, of what noise is uh, because you need to be able to understand what noise is before you can understand what i'm talking about all right um, before we even go into the example i'm going to talk about the eye and what that same diagram of the eye and what represents the iso from the from our eye all right, there's something called the, cold, the rod and cone cells. If you remember your biology very, very well, uh, it, is, it is some cells at the back, almost very close to the retina, that supports you to be able to see in the dark. All right, not 100% pitch black, but basically, uh, if you're not too, if you could see just a little bit of light, it is your rod and cone cells that allow you to see uh, in, in, the, in, you know, in the dark, allows you to see a bit of color. And, uh, and, and you know basically black and white okay so that's what the rod and cold cell does and uh, I'm just going to give you an example of how the ISO is you have the ISO 2000 some places you have very high ISOs uh, you have ISOs from as low as 100 some are even some go all the way down to 10 uh, some push all the way to 64,000 some goes all the way to 128 uh, but for what, what, I'm, what I just want to show you here is an example of two different ISOs that I took of my computer. Yes, I use a satellite, I use a Toshiba, I do not use an Apple yet, but I'm going to get there someday anyways. But if you have a look closely at these two images, you will notice that the noise level of this ISO 64000 is really much. This is what I mean by noise. Um, it's just the sensitivity of light that your sensor is, is, you know, is actually getting at that point in time. So setting my camera to ISO 2000, I had less noise, uh, but increase, increasing the ISO setting to 64,000, I had, had more noise in the image. Okay, so um, that's basically about everything that has to do with all three. So we've covered the ISO, we've covered the shutter speed, and we've also covered the aperture. Uh, so next, we're gonna talk about the depth of field of um, what the depth of field is and of and how exactly do you achieve depth of field and we're also going to bruise or let's just say run through what we call the f-stop a lot of people have heard a lot about f-stop but the question is what really is f-stop uh, we're going to talk about all of that in the next video so thank you for your time i have taken up to 14 minutes of your time already but thank you for listening, and I hope uh, it's not a total waste of your time. Bye-bye.